Now to Afghanistan, where the UN World Food Program is dropping two million people from food support. The agency blamed a massive shortfall in funding. Altogether, over 10 million Afghans have been dropped from food assistance since the beginning of this year. The UN is raising the alarm over shrinking aid to the country, warning of a catastrophe if things don't change. It said the World Food Program now has to choose between the hungry and the starving in a country where most already don't know where they'll get their next meal. We're joined now from Kabul by Ali Latifi. He's the Asia editor at the New Humanitarian. Ali, how bad has the situation, the humanitarian situation, become for the people in Afghanistan since the Taliban regained control? I mean, you just have to look at the UN statistics. Over the last two years, they've consistently said that something between 18 and more than 20 million people will be in need of some kind of emergency assistance over whatever year we're talking about, 2021, 2022, 2023. Uh, and this year is no different. This year, I think, it was estimated at around 20 million already. So now you're adding what? You're taking away 2 million more, 10 million more. You're just adding to what it's already called, uh, I think, like the world's largest humanitarian crisis. So it's, it's very evident that there's an issue here. Who are the people most affected by the shortage of food, Ali? I mean, you're talking about, you know, very rural people, people who used to be farmers who, or who are still farmers who, you know, had, had to deal with the devastating effects of, in the last two years, earthquakes, floods, droughts, who were already essentially living subsistence living. And then when the economy overall collapses, and you know investment lowers they continue to suffer they they are suffering not only because of natural disasters that are beyond their control they're also uh, suffering because of economic issues that are also beyond their control which means that they are finding it more and more difficult to feed themselves and their children so the people in afghanistan are not uh, chiefly responsible for what they're what they're facing uh, it sounds like you're saying would you who would you say is chiefly responsible for the humanitarian crisis that we're seeing in afghanistan today the international community because you're talking about an economic crisis that was created after the Taliban took over, which the international community knew was going to happen. They knew the Islamic Emirate was coming back into power. And immediately they inflicted sanctions, banking restrictions, they withheld assets, they cut back on aid. They're continuing to cut back on aid while they are you know, aiding other countries uh, that they feel are more important uh, or somehow more valuable to them politically. Um, and again, this is what the people are saying, is that we are not the Taliban, we are not the Islamic Emirate. Why are we suffering because of them? Mm. And, you know, the, these sorts of aid cutbacks, these restrictions, all of these things, they also in impact investor confidence. So even people, men and women, who could have found ways to work previously, uh, even with all of the Islamic Emirate restrictions, because investors are afraid to invest in the country, because on the one hand, they feel there's no market, you know, that they, yeah. Consumer spending is basically flatlined. And on the other, you know, because of these restrictions and these sanctions and such, it's created this sort of perfect storm of negative economic effects. Right. Uh, just briefly, Ali, uh, you say the international community is responsible. But what about the Taliban? Are they not responsible too? Of course they are, because at the same time, you're talking about, for instance, let's talk about, you know, women-only households, which is a large portion of this country. It's not a negligible amount. And because, for mm. instance, let's say women in urban areas who used to be able to work for in any section of the government can now only work in small segments of the government, okay. who even when they work in NGOs have to do it through uh, workarounds and such, uh, that also impacts uh, you know, the ability of people to feed their families. Ali, thank you very much. That was Ali Latifi, Asia editor at the New Humanitarian.